everyone! Happy Halloween! I am recording this on the final day of October. I have my pumpkin mug here for Halloween. My son is dressing up as a hammerhead shark. It's gotten so cold here in Maine the last couple of days and even this morning we had our very first frost on the leaves and it was just kind of neat. There's sort of a thrill I feel inside whenever I see that. So anyway, I just wanted to pop on here and show you my collection of illustrated Victorian literature. I'm going to show you my adapted versions first and then I'll move on to my full versions. I also thought I would begin and end this video with Jane Eyre because it's my favorite of all the Victorian classics. So let me take a sip of coffee and we'll get started. The first one I have for you is the Sweet Cherry Classics version, illustrated by Ariana Bellucci. It's the Easy Classics series, and I've shown you one of these before, their version of Mansfield Park during my Jane Austen July video. I actually picked this up while my mother and I were in England visiting the Bronte Parsonage last autumn and um, it was definitely one of the more sober places that we had visited on our trip but it was just amazing to be in the home where Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights and the Tenant of Wildfell Hall had been penned. But anyway, I love this one. Uh, first of all, I just love the all the leaves on the cover. I think that's just so pretty. And I love this family tree as well. I think that's really helpful and interesting. There's the, that moment when Mr. Rochester finally confesses his love for Jane. And when Jane discovers Thornfield has been burnt down. And it's just a really good version. Ariana Bellucci has also illustrated others of the Sweet Cherry Easy Classics. The other two very famous works from the Bronte sisters, The Tenet of Wildfell Hall and Wuthering Heights. But she has also illustrated others of Charlotte Bronte, such as Shirley, Villette, the Professor, and also one by Anne Bronte, Agnes Gray. There's also a book about the three Bronte sisters in this line that was written by the adapter of these series, which I believe her name is Stephanie Baudet. And she's also the illustrator of the Sherlock Holmes series in the Easy Classic series. So I think they're just so pretty and I really love these. Another adapted series that I just really adore are the classic adventure series from Starry Forest Books. And I have two here, Black Beauty and The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. They choose the most amazing illustrators and they're so well made and they're at an excellent price point. And Black Beauty was illustrated by Teresa Martinez, who is an illustrator living in Mexico. And she also does their version of The Wizard of Oz, which is just beautiful. And I think there's this really charming book that she illustrated as well called The Halloween Tree, if I'm not mistaken. So you might recognize her work from that. Here's the end papers, which I think are fantastic. Here's one of her illustrations. And Sherlock Holmes is illustrated by Italian illustrator Carlo Molinari. And once again, it has some beautiful end paper. And here's an example of one of his pieces. And my son and I just read this one, and it has three of the Sherlock Holmes stories in them. The Red-Headed League, The Speckled Band, and The Hound of the Baskervilles. And I must say, I really enjoyed The Speckled Band. That was my favorite, and my son agrees. Carlo Molinari also illustrates their version of The Three Musketeers and Treasure Island. So yeah, and I just love his work. Another series that I really, really love and that is so eye-catching are the Kids Classics from Whalen Publishing. These also have the fabulous distinction of being from a publishing company in Kennebunkport, Maine. I always have a hard time saying that one. All illustrated by Mighty Schmidt, who is a illustrator living in Strasbourg, France and she does all of them and i've got these two here so dracula and sherlock holmes i also really want to get the moby dick and the frankenstein i just think they're fantastic but they also have others coming out or already came out grimm's fairy tales i believe is already out and i believe there's a christmas carol coming 
and I saw somewhere a little women as well but I haven't been able to find it again so I'm not sure about that one and then there's King Arthur which also looks fabulous but what I love about these are they have so much extra information in them the end papers are always a map and then in the start it talks about how Bram Stoker first got the idea for Dracula and then it also has a little bit of information about what an epistolary novel is and a novel that is written as if somebody's writing journal entries or diary entries and so it starts off with that and what I also love is that in each and every one of these books there's a little sentence where it promotes the idea of eventually reading the original works because I think it's so important to read the classics. So for example here, Dracula is a shortened, just for kids version of Stoker's classic tale. When you are ready, you must read the original, if you dare. So I kind of love it. It's, let me show you Mighty Schmidt's, an illustration of hers. Go. Here's one from Sherlock Holmes. We've also got the, the map as well and the end papers. And there's another one. Whalen Press or Applesauce Press also does some beautiful republishings of Charles Santori's Aesop's Fables and The Night Before Christmas. Mighty Schmidt also has another line of books that are kind of a Frankenstein spin-off, When Frankie Made a Human. So check those out. I think they're really cool too. So on previous videos, I mentioned how my son and I are going to read The Water Babies, and I showed you a couple of versions that I have, so I'm not gonna show those to you, but I do have a beautiful adapted version of The Water Babies that I thought I would show to you by Anne Graham Johnston. And I also have her Peter Pan and Wendy as well, which I took with me to England and photographed in front of the Peter Pan statue at Kensington Gardens. So this one's been my little adventure here. But anyway, I just love these beautiful, delicate illustrations by Anne Graham Johnston. And I'll show you a couple. So like, here's the end papers. And then here's one of them. One from the Peter Pan as well, which is just lovely. I really love, it's so pretty. And all her children are so adorable. I love how they're standing on the toadstools in this one. Anne Graham Johnston is one part of a twin sister illustrator team. Her sister Janet and her illustrated a multitude of children's books, starting with Dodie Smith's 101 Dalmatians and Paul Gallico's Monk's Mouse. And they also did several fairy tales, folk tales, Greek myths, just a ton of books. Unfortunately, Janet passed away quite suddenly after a fire that broke out in their kitchen. Um, she died from smoke inhalation and Anne had to first of all on her own finish all the works that they had been commissioned to do which she did and then she continued illustrating books on her own. So this one and the Peter Pan are two examples of books that Anne illustrated on her own. One of my very favorite YouTubers and bloggers, and she's on Instagram too, uh, Beautiful Books. I think her name is Daisy at Beautiful Books. She has an entire blog post dedicated to Janet and Anne Graham Johnston's works. And so I'll link it below so that you can check out some of the other titles that they've done if you're interested. But I just think they're beautiful and I'm trying to collect a few of them. I think I ordered another one, which is Poetry of all seasons. I'm so excited for that to come. So, but anyway, so such a pretty book. Like a lot of Alice in Wonderland collectors out there, I have a few copies, but I wanted to show you this copy of Alice in Wonderland because my beloved cousin David sent this to my son as a baby gift. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny because the fact that he sent it to my son as a baby gift speaks volumes about his personality. <laughs> but anyway, he passed away. We lost him a couple of years ago. So I always think of him when I see this. This beautiful book is illustrated by the master of surrealism, Salvador Dali, if you haven't already figured that out. <laughs> In 1969, Random House commissioned Salvador Dali to create 12 illustrations for um, Alice in Wonderland, which he did and they printed it in a limited edition of 2,700 copies. So 
Over time, it has become really expensive, and then fortunately, Princeton University Press back in 2015 republished it for Alice's 150th anniversary in this beautiful book, and it's gorgeous. Dolly created 12 photogravure prints for this book, as well as a four-color etching that um, used as a frontispiece. Let me show that to you. So there's the four color etching. And then the rest are done by photogravure, which I had never heard of photogravure, so I looked it up. And it's a very expensive, very tedious method of creating art using a copper plate that you then cover with ink to get a really cool effect, which is gorgeous but it's not really used as much today because it is really a tedious process, but the effect is beautiful. This is an illustration from the first chapter, Down the Rabbit Hole. Alice is portrayed with a jump rope, and that's of course from his work, um, Landscape of a Girl Skipping Rope. I also love how Dolly used butterflies because butterflies are a symbolism of change. I also really love this one from A Mad Tea Party, chapter seven and it has that iconic melted clock from his very famous work Persistence of Memory and I thought it was pretty cool how he used it as the table from the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. If you look closely you can see that there's a teapot and teacups on it. Anyway, very special version and I really love this and it's a treasure to have in my home on my bookshelf. The next one that I want to show you is this beautiful version of Oscar Wilde's the Selfish Giant. I actually did an Illustrator Explore of The Selfish Giant early spring this year. And this one is my favorite. It's illustrated by Ritva Votila. And she is an artist from Finland. I love her illustrations. First of all, I love this version published by Alan and Unwin. And it's just beautiful. And, and this is kind of a different material. It's kind of cloth bound, it feels like. The illustrations are gorgeous and meaningful. So I don't want to give away any spoilers, but I just wanted to show you this one illustration, which I just think is fantastic. I just ate a biscuit because a truck just went down the road and he was taking forever. He was backing up and everything. So I just decided to take a break real quick. It was making too much noise, but anyway, I love this illustration because as you can see, the selfish giant is lifting this boy up into the tree, but can you see the boy in his hands? He's invisible. So I thought that was really cool. And I also love this because there's an aardvark in here. Aardvarks are one of my favorite creatures on earth. If you have ever seen one in person, they are so cute. I was at the San Diego Zoo walking around when my son was a baby. He, I had him in the stroller and one of the zookeepers had their aardvark on the leash and was walking him around. And I was like, oh, that is the most beautiful cutest creature I've ever seen in my life so ever since then I've loved aardvarks anyway moving on Ritva Votila has also illustrated a version of the Nutcracker which I think is really beautiful and I want to check out the next one I have for you is Anna Sewell's Black Beauty and this one is illustrated by Dinah Drehurst she's an Australian illustrator she also has the railway children and little women that are quite beautiful. Dina Drehurst uses watercolor and pencil sketches to recreate mid-Victorian countrysides and London, and she does such a great job at it. And it's just a beautiful book. Look under the cover, and then the end papers. This version was a gift from my beloved Aunt Galen to me. To Heather, happy reading, love you, Aunt Galen. <laughs> Look at this beautiful illustration here. I have to get it just right because all the pages are glossy. So I hope my ring light isn't showing too much in there. Here's another one that really kind of shows you that mid-Victorian period. I think that is so beautiful. And then we've got a black and white sketch that she did. And, and they're prolific. There's an illustration on pretty much every turn of the page. It's just a beautiful book and I really love this one. I, it's one of my favorite books in my collection, so I had to show you that. The next one I have is a copy of Dr. Thorne, Folio Society, 1978, that I actually found in London when I was there last autumn with my mom. We found it at a bookstore called Any Amount of Books. It was on Charing Cross Road 
and just had a beautiful selection of used books and was fantastic. The illustrator here is known more for his woodblock illustrations. His name is Peter Reddick and he illustrated a ton of works for the Folio Society, a lot of Anthony Trollope's Thomas Hardy books and a poetry collection by Robert Browning. He is known for his woodblock illustrations, but he illustrated Anthony Trollope's Dr. Thorne using atmospheric pen drawings. I love this story. It's such a, a great book. I don't know if you've read it. There's also a BBC drama, Dr. Thorne. I also love it as well. My sister Tamara told me about it once. So there is so that is the 1978 version by the Folio Society, and I don't have a slipcase, I just bought it, and I think I bought it for, let's see, how much did I pay for it? Five pounds. <laughs> and then I have another of his works, this one using his delicate wood blocks by the Folio Society, Far From the Matting Crowd. I think it was published in 2018, I believe. And here you can see, and oh, by the way, all of them have a map on the end papers, and they're beautifully cloth bound. This is Mr. Oak with the lamb that he's bringing for Bathsheba. And then this was a gift from my husband. He surprised me with it. He saw how much I watched the movie <laughs> over and over and over again. So he just decided to go ahead and grab me the book, which I'm so grateful for because I can't wait to read it. I was looking up Peter Reddick's obituary and I found some very interesting things and I wanted to read to you this passage. Although wood engraving would be neglected, even sneered at in the pop art and screen print days of the late 60s and 70s, Reddick's work not only sustained the medium, along with others including David Gentleman, Kenneth Lindley, and George Toot but also ensured it was capable of revival in the 80s. Another Folio Society edition that I just adore, and it has this beautiful, this one does have a slipcase, and so I'm just so happy to own this. So we've come to our final book, and it is my Folio Society version of Jane Eyre, published in 2014 and illustrated by Santiago Caruso. He's an Argentinian illustrator, and I think he is just the perfect pairing for this book. His illustrations are deep and they're thought-provoking, and they always kind of ask you to think about what you're seeing. I'll show you a couple of examples here. So here's where Jane and Helen are curled up in bed when, when Helen passes away. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's snow. I mean, which is odd because they're indoors, right? But I think it's trying to represent how cold Jane felt when her only friend in the world passed away. And then here's another one. This is that moment where Jane and Mr. Rochester meet for the first time. I found it so curious. I had to look and look and try to figure out what that expression is on Mr. Rochester's face. And I honestly, I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> but if you look closely, the branches of the trees kind of make almost a fairy wing, fairy wing sort of effect behind Mr. Rochester and behind Jane. And suddenly for the first time, you know, I'd always thought of Jane Eyre as similar to Beauty and the Beast, but for the first time I realized how similar it is to Tamlin. There's a Scottish folktale or myth called Tamlin where, oh, I actually brought it here to show you where a girl named Janet pulls Tamlin off a white horse and has to really just hold on to him as he changes into all sorts of different scary creatures, including one being a block of coal, in order to save him from the evil fairy queen. I never thought about it before, but this picture, as I was gazing at it, brought Tamlin to mind. You have the white horse and you have Jane, but you know, whose name is of course similar to Janet. And then when I saw those branches and how they kind of form almost wings. It just brought it to mind. So anyway, I don't know. That's just me. That's just my interpretation of it. Maybe they're not meant to be that at all. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, so then this was the final one that I thought was really interesting when Jane is lying there. She's passed out after leaving Mr. Rochester, after finding out that he has a wife. And it puts you in mind of her being trapped in a spider's web. I thought that was really neat, but yeah, a treasured, treasured book that I own. If, if my house caught on fire, this is the version I would grab and run out with. <laughs>
after saving my son and husband and making sure we're fine, of course. But but yeah, that would be it would be Jane Eyre, you know. Oh, let me just let me knock on wood there <laughs> real quick. So that is it. That is my current stash of Victorian literature that I have in my collection at the moment. I do have several Christmas carols because I did a Christmas Carol Illustrator Explorer last year, but I figured I would wait until around the holiday season to show you guys those. Let me know in the comments what you're reading and if there's any illustrators that you really love that you'd love for me to know about, let me know. I love looking up new illustrators and their works and discovering you know, what's out there. It's so much fun. So thank you so much for watching. I will be back soon with a book haul video that I'm excited to do. So until then, I hope you have a wonderful start to November and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.